The topic for this lecture is the Brown indexes. So here is the motivation. So we we assume on type lambda calculus. So the motivation is let's think about this identity function, lambda abstraction that denotes identity function. This is a simple example that uses this particular bound variable x. But we can always we can always rename this bound variable if we don't like this particular choice. So for example, with the alpha conversion, we can rename this bound variable to y. And these are two lambda expressions, these lambda abstractions use different bound variables, but their meaning is identical. So whenever you don't like a particular choice of this bound variable, you can always rename it. And this observation suggests that perhaps there can be some way to get rid of these bound variables completely. So in other words, we might be able to represent these lambda abstractions without using names. So that is, there might be some nameless representation of lambda expressions. And the most popular technique to get rid of these bound variables is the Brown indexes. So here's the key idea. The key idea is, given a bound variable like this, we replace this bound variable with an integer. And this integer is going to indicate the relative position of this bound variable with respect to its corresponding lambda binder. So we are going to replace this bound variable to some integer. And this integer is called the Brown index. So for uh, this, the Brown index can be negative, but for this lecture, we assume that this, the Brown indexes are always non-negative. Then how do we decide the, the Brown index? The idea is we count the number of lambda binders that lies between this bound variable and the corresponding lambda binder. So in this particular example, this is a bound variable, this is a corresponding lambda binder, and between these two, there is no intervening lambda binder. So therefore, we replace this bound variable with a zero. So it's going to be lambda zero. And because we get rid of these bound variables, we replace these bound variables with in these indexes. Now there is no need to declare bound variable in this lambda binder position. So we don't like anything here. So it, we can rewrite this lambda expression into this uh, new form of expression where this variable x has been replaced by the Brown index zero. Here's another example, lambda x, lambda y, x, y. And this time, for this bound variable x, the corresponding lambda binder is found here. And between these two, we find an intervening lambda binder. So if we convert this one using the Brown indexes, then this x is going to be 1 because we have this single lambda binder lying between this lambda binder and this bound variable. And what about this y? Between this bound variable and the corresponding lambda binder, there is no intervening lambda binder. So this is going to be 0. Then we have two lambda binders here. Again, we don't declare, we don't declare the uh, 
bound variables here because that's the whole point of introducing the Brown indexes. We just get rid of bound variables. So there's no need to declare them here. So this is the result of converting this expression using the Brown indexes. So from this example, we can see that this the Brown index actually represents the relative position of the corresponding lambda binder. So this one means that you should skip one lambda binder in order to reach the corresponding lambda binder. Which is precisely the case here. In order to reach from starting from this bound variable, in order to reach the corresponding lambda binder, you should pass through one intervening lambda binder. So it's to one. And according to this definition, any any the Brown index zero denotes a bound variable whose lambda binder is found right away. That is, the next enclosing lambda binder is going to be the corresponding one. So that's the that's the second example. Let's consider another example, lambda x, x, lambda y, x, y. This time, we see two instances of the same bound variable. For this bound variable x, we see the first instance here and another instance here. And what is the result of converting this expression using the Brown indexes. First, this variable x, the first instance, it's going to be zero because the corresponding lambda binder is found right away. It is the next, the immediately next lambda binder. So we have lambda zero. So um, this is zero. So let me write below. Uh, here. So this becomes zero. Now we have these parentheses and we have lambda here. And this y is going to be similarly zero because it corresponds to the next lambda binder. Then what about this variable x? In order to reach, starting from here, in order to reach the corresponding lambda binder here, you have to pass through this lambda binder. So for this instance, the second instance of a variable x, you have to use the Brown index 1. So we see that for the same variable, for the same bound variable, it's the Brown index can be different depending on its relative position. It's a position relative to the corresponding lambda binder. This is the corresponding lambda binder. And this one and this one have different relative positions because of the presence of this intervening lambda binder. So from this example, we see that the same bound variable may have a different the Brown indexes depending on its relative position. So that's the basic idea, pretty much the basic idea behind the Brown indexes. So let's introduce the Brown expressions. So we use a meta variable m here. And in the case of untitled lambda calculus, the variable is x. But now we are going to replace this variable with the Brown index. So let's write the Brown index as n. So the Brown index is going to be n. And we assume that we use just the non-negative integers. So we, we have 1. 0, 1, 2, uh, blah, blah. And in the original untyped lambda calculus, we have this form of lambda abstraction. And the corresponding form here is just lambda m. Notice that we no longer declare bound variables because there is no need to do. 
there is no need to. And from applications, lambda applications, we have corresponding applications in the Brown expressions. So this is the definition of the Brown expressions and the, we use non-negative integers for the Brown indexes. So let's write, uh, when we convert the original untyped expression into the Brown expression, let's write this way. So we have seen three examples so far. Lambda x dot x is going to be just lambda zero. So remember that this zero always uh, denotes the bound of variable uh, whose lambda binder is found right away. And we have uh, the second example. And this time we have a lambda, lambda, and this is going to be one because of the this lambda binder. So it is one, and this is going to be zero. And we have also seen this example lambda x, x, lambda y dot x, y. But this is this is lambda, this is zero because you found you find the corresponding lambda binder right away. And we have just lambda, you don't declare this bound variable, and this one is going to be zero. And this one is going to be one because of the presence of a single one instance of this lambda binder. And if you think about the meaning of this, the Brown index, we actually, we can find that when you are given an expression E, you don't want to interpret it as some sort of linear structure like this one but rather you want to interpret it as some sort of tree-like structure. So for instance, when you have something like E1 applied to E2, like lambda x dot E1 applied, E1 applied to E2, you want to consider it as some form of some tree-like structure. So you have lambda x here, and you have E1 and E2, rather than lambda x dot E1, E2. So let's, let's see an example to illustrate why we want to interpret this expression as a tree-like structure. So here's an example, lambda x, uh, x, lambda y, x, y. So we have seen this example. Uh, already, and this time we have another another expression here, x d. So remember that the scope of this is body expand extend as far to the right as possible. So this is the body of this lambda abstraction. So it's easy to convert uh, this fragment. So this x is going to be zero, and we have lambda, and this is this is going to be this time. It's going to be one because we have to pass through one lambda binder, and this is going to be zero. The question now is how do we convert this lambda abstraction? So it may be something like lambda that this z is definitely zero because it is the current local bound of variable. You can find the corresponding lambda binder right away. So the remaining question is, what is the, the Brown index for x? If you interpret the whole expression as linear structure, like this one, then if you literally count the number of lambda binders between this variable and the corresponding lambda binder, we actually find the two lambda binders along the way this one, and this one. So then, should we use two as the, the, the Brown index for this variable x? And the answer is actually no, because our instinct says, this is not the right way to interpret this given expression E, like this linear structure. 
intuitively, whatever lies here should not affect the De Brown index for this variable x. Because this expression is given independently of this lambda abstraction. So instead of interpreting the whole expression as this linear structure, you want, it, you want to interpret it as something like this, some tree-like structure. So what that means is that you want to interpret it as something like lambda x. Uh, so left side is going to be x lambda y x y. And the right subtree has lambda z x z. Then if you've counted the number of lambda binders along the way from this lambda binder and the corresponding uh, from this bound variable to the corresponding lambda binder, you only pass through just one instance of lambda binder. So therefore, the answer is actually one, not two. So that's the point that you want to remember when you convert lambda expressions into De Brown expressions. You don't want to interpret the expression as something like this one, linear structure. Rather, you want to interpret it as a tree-like structure. And that's the proper way to convert that's the proper way to count the number of lambda binders when calculating the brown indexes.